Um, so I'm pretty old school. I like to design in Photoshop uh, to just like work my, my ideas out, but I don't usually present that stuff to a client. Um, that's just for me to work out my ideas, share some stuff with, with Lynn, we can go over stuff. Um, I am a designer who codes, so I've got a bit of an idea of how things are gonna be built. Um, so I did a strong style system for them. And then also thinking about designing with WordPress in mind, um, I was able to think about what functionality comes within WordPress that I could bake into the design. So I'm always thinking in terms of execution. Uh, yeah, question. Just uh, what you mean by strong in terms of style system? Here's a screenshot of my initial style guide that came out of Photoshop. Um, it's a little hard to see because I tried to squish it all into one for you. Um, right off the bat, I wanted to make sure that um, design Design things like hierarchy and importance were strongly carried out in the execution of the design and that that's what, what would last over time. Because Buddies has a lot of different stuff going on. They have different graphic identities as their seasons change and their shows come and go. Um, so at first, I designed only in shades of gray. It was never the intention to keep it in black and white and shades of gray, but the idea was I wanted to design with that so that we could clearly show the hierarchy of elements without necessarily using color right off the bat. And then it turns out that actually we liked it so much that we kept most of it in shades of gray. Um, but really important uh, hierarchy of type. Uh, we used short codes to build in lots of buttons for them uh, so that we had a really strong relationship, different elements on the page. So that's what I mean in terms of a system as opposed to designing for specific content because the content's always going to change. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so developing for WordPress, like similar idea, I'm not going to be working on it. So um, all of the clients that I work for, I'm not in-house. I don't stay there. I don't continue updating. Um, because WordPress lets the clients continue to update, you know that they're going to be in there working on it. So sort of similar to the design, you can't have this like beautifully laid out. It's only going to work if everything looks exactly like this um, because they are going to take it over. So WordPress has a lot of functionality built in to help you with that, help you actually hand over to a client and successfully have them manage the site. Um, also relied on a couple plugins. Um, so things like uh, building custom widgets. So the text widget, for instance, can be useful if you know code, but if you don't, it's not as useful. So um, building in custom widgets with the theme that then lets them put what they need to into not necessarily even sidebars. So areas on the site where they need to be able to go in and edit and it's not a full page. Um, also short codes. Built into WordPress, you have to create them, but it is a system that exists there. Um, so instead of uh, leaving the client with just a whole bunch of code to use, like here's how you put in a button, but you need to switch to the text editor and you need to paste all this stuff in, create a short code that will do that for them. Um, and then the plugin that I relied most heavily on is advanced custom fields. Generally, I like to keep the number of plugins down, um, but advanced custom fields I find pretty uh, unavoidable, um, just because then you're not giving your client a giant block of content to fill in. Um, you can really segment it out and give them uh, separate fields and kind of keep the guesswork down. So especially for uh, shows, for instance. So because Buddies has so many different shows, trying to remember um, like where on the page to put the date of the show, where to put the cast, um, they had a lot of content. So breaking it out into fields just takes all the guesswork out of it. So every show is gonna look the same. It's gonna have the same layout without them having to like look at the last show and remember where everything goes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Which also in a great way, it, it kind of future proofs the site. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They had a, a WordPress website before that was just using a, a pre-existing theme and just giant blocks of like, you know, WYSIWYG um, text editors. And, you know, there's lots of different people. There's Mark and a few other people on the team at Buddies who were uh, responsible for updating and keeping the information loaded in. And over time, if all you have is a text field, it will start to fall apart. Someone won't remember that something should be an H1 or an H2. Someone won't remember to bold a certain section or another section. So we made sure that we built in a lot of custom fields for them that would um, take away the styling so that they could just focus on inputting the data and the content. And things like image sizes, right? So in advanced custom fields, you can also have um, image fields and specify exactly what image size is going to be output. So like a featured image, but you can have more than one on a page. 
So yeah. Uh, this is kind of both of us, I guess. Yeah. Um, so this is a private page on the site that is always there. Um, it's going to stay there. Um, and it's sort of Avery's style guide, but it's in action. So it has all of the headings, all of the text styles, uh, all of the short codes. It's kind of a little short code reference for them. Um, and the reason that it's a page is so that it takes all the styling. Uh, from the theme. So at any point, if um, you want to see what uh, an H3 is going to look like, you can refer to this page. Um, and then, yeah, it just also has some sort of, this is how you maybe should insert these elements. Yeah. We really like to build as much documentation into the actual website as possible. With uh, client projects in the past, we found if we write a PDF guide or a Google Doc or something, that gets lost. And uh, I hope, but I hope Mark works at Buddies forever because he's so awesome. But if he goes on to another job and somebody comes in to replace him, they might not know where to go and where to find the documentation. So we do things like building in these private pages that show you clearly, like this is how you make this button if you want to then put it into your page. So it's all right there inside the site. They don't have to go hunting for some misplaced document. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is a, just an example of using uh, WordPress's functionality. So the um, area up here, the see more for less uh, area, was originally just, uh, it was a custom field, but it was a WYSIWYG uh, area. And the purpose was just to call out their Buddies Rewards program. But what we realized is that on every show, they're going to have that info. And it's not going to change from show to show. It's always just this little sort of call out. Um, so Again, if they like change the phrasing of that, they're going to have to go into every show and edit that. Um, so I ended up making it a uh, widget area um, that's a custom widget. So it, instead of the text uh, widget, it's a WYSIWYG, just so that they get a couple more options. Um, and then it is a widget area, but that widget area appears anywhere that that short code is used. So it is a widget area, but it's a little more flexible than widget areas normally are, like that they're always going to be on this page. Um, you just use the short code rewards widget, and it's going to pull in whatever is in that widget area. It took a little while to like explain and sort of, OK, yeah, so when you can... use the short code, you get the widget from the widget area. Um, but yeah, I think it just ended up being a lot more flexible. And uh, then they just have to update it in one place, because theater companies are busy. <laughs> Very uh, they don't have time to go in and edit a bunch of shows if they decide that they just want to change the phrasing of that line. Nice. So Lynn and I had done a fair amount of work um, at leading up to um, what I think most of you would kind of call like the big reveal. Behind the scenes and then you want to hand over something to your client for approval, show them what you've been coming up with. Up until this point, um, I had been working with Mark and Brendan on getting the style system. So they had seen some very rough kind of like, I don't really do wireframes per se, but they were kind of like wireframe sketches. And, and they signed off on the style guide so that they knew what type of hierarchy to expect with that. But then they hadn't really seen a prototype um, until Lynn and I came in together and did uh, what we call the big reveal. And I'm sure all of you do this at some point. You know, you're all prepared to go in and have your Mad Men moment. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is probably the biggest and scariest moment, I think, for most people to do what we do. But the number one thing I want to remind you is that um, you are not going to hit a home run out of the gate. Like, you're just not. You're not going to get it right, right out of the gate. So relieve some of the pressure that you have and if you have a high level of trust between you and the client, which you've hopefully been trying to maintain trust and respect through the entire process, you pull some of the, um, the risk and the scariness out of the big reveal. And you, know, you set up expectations and you let them know, like, we are going to show you something that is not done yet. Do not expect that this is going to be your final product. We are not even halfway through the process. We still have a lot more work to do. Um, so instead of setting this up like you know Don Draper, instead just you know make it uh, something a little bit more manageable. Um, so one thing that we like to do, Lynn and I, and I think this is probably a little bit unconventional, is that um, 
we not only present the front end of the test site, and it is a built out site. We're not showing them, you know, a Photoshop mock-up or some InVision prototype. We're showing an actual WordPress site. Um, we present the front end, which is probably what most of you do, but we also present the back end. And we, even, we give that as much, if not even more importance. Um, you want to talk about that? Yeah, because especially on a project like this where um, so much of uh, what we were hired to do was make the content editing process better. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so like that was a major selling point of what we were doing. We were changing the design, we were changing the look of it, but we were also like completely changing Mark's life uh, as a content editor. Um, so yeah, when we presented the site, obviously the look of it is important, but also that's the part that's probably going to change um, as you're working with the client. Uh, it's really the back end and being able to see, for instance, all those custom fields. So say, okay, now when you edit a show, this is what it's going to look like. And I find like that point often is even more of a <gasps> moment than actually showing <laughs> the design. Um, because especially if you've already been working with WordPress and you're used to it just being, you know, the title field and the big content block, and then you see all these fields, uh, it's pretty exciting. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you like gasped. <laughs> oh yeah, that was like the most fun part of like, because yeah. I spend more time in the back end than I do on the front end. Right, totally. You know? As yeah. most site owners do. So yeah, um, and again, like we really emphasize that this is not the finished website. Like this is just the starting point. Um, we'll refer to it as a first draft. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not done. Don't like worry if this just doesn't look how, how you want it to look because that's now what we're going to be working on. Um, but this is just sort of the starting point for you. Um, this is also the point that we handed over the admin login to Mark. You might be thinking this. Um, but if you uh, establish enough trust and really work on um, getting your client comfortable with working in WordPress, editing WordPress, um, then they too can be as happy as happy Leonardo DiCaprio strolling into Mordor. If you don't get that whole thing that just happened, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, we strongly believe after doing a lot of projects where we didn't hand over any type of admin access. And oh, and by the way, we think clients deserve admin access. Please don't lock them out and just put them in an editor role. They, they're paying for this. It's your job to empower them and train them that they should have full admin access. Um, so, you know, we've done what a lot of you probably have done, which is like we would build out the whole thing. We would not hand over admin access or do training until after site launch. And by that point, A, that like, that's causing you a lot of time because there's probably going to be content requests up until that point, and you're going to be the one who's going in and changing semicolons to colons. And who wants to do that? Um, Mark does. <laughs> um, <laughs> it empowers them early, and then also, as you see, like at this point on, um, it allows you to to get a lot of feedback and stuff from them before you launch, as opposed to after. Because I'm sure after you hand over a site, you know, you get some money, you launch, you give somebody admin access. I can guarantee your phone or your email is going to be pinging about a week later with people going, hey, what about this? What about this? Can I do this? I didn't remember. I didn't think about this before. Can we do this now? And you're like, dude, this ship has sailed. I'm on to the next thing. <laughs> so not only did we give uh, Mark admin access, but because he was an admin, he could then start creating accounts for other people in the organization. Um, so WordPress supports multiple users and also multiple users with different levels of access. So not everybody on the site is an administrator. Um, in some organizations, maybe that would work, uh, <laughs> but not always. Um, but so we pretty early on will create multiple accounts for everybody that's going to be working on the site. Part of that is because we don't offer um, content migration and cleanup and like that wasn't part of the quote. Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which started, I mean, I started doing that um, for clients who, where it just wasn't in the budget, but now I do it all the time uh, because when they get in there and they're working on their content, they will be calling you, they will be emailing you as stuff comes up, but you're still working on the project. Like you're not over the project uh, by that point. So you're working on um, iterating on the design and the functionality. They're actually working in the site 
And so by the time you leave, they've worked on the site a bunch and they're already comfortable with it. They can obviously still contact you, um, but I find it doesn't actually happen that often because we've had a couple months of them working in the site, being able to call me at any time. Um, not any time, uh, most of the day. Um, and then uh, by the time you hand off, they're like, yeah, no, I, I, I know where everything is. Like, I've been working on it. Um, so when you're going to have multiple users uh, in WordPress as well, um, this was mostly uh, Avery's job, but talking to everybody that's going to be working on the site, if, if possible, um, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, even though I was kind of like the designer on the project, um, this is also why we don't like waterfall method. Um, I didn't just disappear after the front end. Um, we then went into this uh, this role where I was talking to the client more, coming and visiting them more, making sure that they had everything they needed, making sure they understood things. They would then request features from me or say like, you know, we loaded in that stuff and it didn't look like it, it did in your demo when we actually put in our own content. Or um, we had a moment with Mark and I where he was like, I need more buttons. <laughs> and I was like, dude, you have enough buttons. You're just not using them right. Um, so we would work out, you know, again, like maintaining the hierarchy. There were some things where some of the, the hierarchy of the original style was wrong. Because again, I didn't hit a home run right out of the gate. But because we were all working in the site, and then Mark was able to indicate what he needed, he would flip me an email or a Basecamp message that would say, um, you know, I feel like this is off. I'm loading in all this stuff and it's not it's not reading right. And then I would flip a message over to Lynn and be like, here, I just quickly did this design on the fly. Can you build a short code for it? She'd build the short code, we'd fire it over to Mark, Mark would put it in, and then we just kind of did this like crazy everybody dancing at the same time sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a bit more about that. But um, also at this point, uh, we did a bit of training right away. So part of our big reveal uh, was a bit of training. It was kind of, okay, here's where everything is. Here's where you can find the stuff. Um, just so that, I mean, Mark had also already been using WordPress. So it was a little bit um, specific to the new site. Um, but even when I do this with clients who have never worked with WordPress before, uh, it's still kind of where to find things and how to edit things. And then later on in the process is usually where I'll do some training about um, updates and backups and all of that stuff. It depends a bit on the project. Um, but there will be a couple rounds of training. There won't be this, okay, now in half an hour, you're going to learn everything you need to know about WordPress and bye, because the product is done. And then your clients will feel like this. <laughs> They'll feel good about it. Yeah, I kind of jumped the gun a little bit. This was the uh, <laughs> kind of the multiple cooks in the kitchen sort of thing that, that I was talking about a, a few minutes ago. Um, like specifically with this with this project again like mark was asking for more features asking for more buttons we'd build them for him also um we killed a few features that we thought would work in theory but then when we pulled them into practice like it was not working so be prepared to um kill your darlings like designers let go like if there was something <laughs> that you were like oh it's gonna be so great when they use this and then it's not just let it go. Who cares? This is not important. It's all about what works best for them. Um, and then we actually did introduce a little bit of an accent color really late into the system uh, or late into the process. But because we were already designing in a browser, we were already working with a prototype, um, I had a meeting with Mark where I literally sat down and I just opened up dev tools and just started changing hex values to just show him. I'm like, you like this color? You like this color? What do you think about this? Uh, no, I don't know. And then we looked at one color and we thought it would like, I think we had a neon yellow we were running with for a while. Yeah. And it looked great until we started doing browser testing. And we popped it open on a couple <laughs> different screens and we realized it was like a hot mess. Yeah, so like then, different. yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> uh, but again, like we didn't know that. In the design it looked hot, but then when we actually pulled it into a bunch of different browsers on a few different devices, we were like, yeah. So then we switched to our, our hot pink instead. Um, this is also the kind of moment where you've got to really have a high level of trust and a really high level of respect for everybody because at this point, Lynn could have gotten really mad at us <laughs> because the messages just kept flying in. Oh, we had a meeting and we thought we wanted to change this and this and this and this and this and this. And this. Is that okay? <laughs> And she already has a to-do list. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, but, because um, I used to, if I worked on projects that were a little more waterfall, that were a little more like, okay, the design is done. Mm -hmm. 
now I will develop exactly what you told me and I will not budget any extra time. Uh, then those kinds of emails are the worst. Uh, but because the way that we were working, um, I knew that we were going to be going back and forth. I knew that we were just starting with this first draft and we were just going to be adding in stuff as Mark worked, Mark worked on it, as we found um, more functionality that was needed. So that was expected. Like It wasn't a surprise that I was getting requests like that. Um, and right at the beginning, we encouraged those kinds of requests as well. Like If you're working on it and you realize, oh, I would actually really love this whatever, like some kind of functionality, um, ask for it. And we will say no if it's not in the budget and we don't have time. Um, because your client doesn't know how long something is going to take. So I've had clients who didn't ask for things, which actually would have been really quick for me to do, but they just don't know that. Um, or clients that ask, oh, yeah, I just need you to do this quick little thing. It's like, actually, that would involve redoing two days of work. Um, but they don't know. So as long as you've told them that it's fine to ask for things, but also it's fine for you to say no, I find that that usually works um, pretty mm. well. So yeah, yeah, we totally reserve the right to say no. Yeah, but, and yeah. again, we had this really hard launch date. Like we had to launch by a certain date, um, which helped a little bit as well because we always knew that. Um, and we got to a point where we said, okay, we could do that later, but that's not going to be done by launch date, which sometimes is fine. Um, and sometimes that means they'll drop it, and sometimes it means they'll just say, okay, so let's revisit this after we launch. Um, and the really important thing that we did on this project that sometimes I forget to do uh, is when you're having this iterative, everybody's sending everybody emails, you need a cutoff date that is not the launch date. So we had a cutoff date a week before launch. And at that point, everybody else out of the kitchen, just me in the kitchen, uh, so that everything actually gets done. Because if you have this, you've been having this constant back and forth, and then suddenly you've started browser testing and you've started device testing and then they ask for a new feature and then you have to go back and test it again. Not great. Yeah. Um, also just in terms of um, content. So Mark was in there the whole time editing the content up until the cutoff date. Because for the same reason, like as I was testing things, if content had been changing drastically, that would have just made things a little harder. Um, and then obviously they know once we launch, they can get back in there. It's just this like one week hold off, don't mm -hmm. touch it. And I think you were relieved that we gave you a like drop it was dead so cutoff nice date. Nice to not have to touch my website. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we were like, you got to go hands off, and you were like, hell's yeah! <laughs> like, I'm happy to go hands off. <laughs> Um, so, you know, Lynn and I have been telling you a lot about like what this was like for us, and I'm sure you've seen many case study presentations before where a developer or designer will tell you what they did. And how good but, it was. Um, <laughs> when have you ever seen a client actually get up and say <laughs> what it was like for them as well? So you don't just have to take our word for it. Let's hear what Mark has to say. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, like, I mean, I've never worked in a process like this with, with any kind of design, but and I, I, when they approached me with this and were kind of explaining, uh, and I was like, I don't know what iterative means, and I had to look it up. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, so it was, it was a little like, OK, OK, but like, I, I trusted these two, and the, because they're quite charming and, and smart. Um, so, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not getting into that. Um, but but working like this was really like I, I, I will try not to repeat a lot of things that were just said, but. Um, being involved in that design process, particularly like from where we're coming from, like Avery said, like our site, we're, we're a charity, our, we can't afford to redesign every year. Our site has to live for at least three or four years for it to financially make sense. Um, and being involved in that design process and actually like having my hands inside the website because I am like the entire communications department in my organization. So I am like constantly in my website, like working with things and I actually like I haven't, I don't think I've asked you for anything since the site launched no, like no. <laughs> yeah like actually like after the site launched I just kind of like sat back and I didn't touch it for like at least a month like it was it was great um and but because because I understood how everything worked and not just how everything worked but why everything worked the way it did mm -hmm. um like you know like 
Yeah, I understood the decision-making process. It went into why this is laid out this way and why I can't have more buttons and why I shouldn't type in caps lock because the internet does that for me. And, uh, so and it actually like it actually felt it was really scary at first, but it actually ended up making it felt really comfortable by the end, and I feel really like at home inside the inside the website um, and and the custom fields. Oh Jesus God, the custom fields! It's so beautiful. Uh, I love, I love, if I could have everything just be custom fields and have no text in my, like, no text boxes in my entire site, that would be fantastic. Um, because it really is, like, like, not just in the way it's designed, but also in the process we got through there, it really is future-proofed. Like, and, and I don't think I've messed up your site too bad. Like, I know. Like, it's like We've four looked. months in, and it, yeah. yeah, I know. I'm We've looked like, at it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When we said we were doing this, I was like, oh, shit, did I fuck up their website? <laughs> <laughs> It's your website. We refer to it as each other's website, which was a couple times I was like, no, it's, it's your website. Yeah. It's not. But, but. Uh, like, uh, like, I feel like we all have like ownership over it. Like, mm -hmm. yes, it's my, my website, and I'll fuck it up if I want to. Uh, but but I, I feel like I actually feel more invested. Like, you should have seen the old site we had, it was kind of untenable. Um, but I, I feel really like I feel a real sense of ownership over the way this thing looks. Like the last site kind of got into a garbage pile for a bunch of reasons, uh, but this one I feel like it. I feel so connected to the design process of it that I like actually like I. I get mad at people when they don't use the right headings when they're inputting yes. event information. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Did I say enough? I'm, I'm I, totally like, yeah, enough yeah. It's just, it's just a really from a client from a client's point of view, it is a really, really, really empowering and uh, and useful way to work because I I totally understand it. I don't know anything about coding or design, but I feel like really, really comfortable specifically inside of my website. Um, and I don't think that would have happened if someone had just handed me something, and I'd probably still be sending you emails asking for things. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, that was the thing too. Like as because I because I was in doing all the content migration, and at one point I checked, and there's something like fifty thousand words on our website. Um, so like actually like getting in there and having to do all these things, like all the different types of pages, and having to put them in, like understanding what it actually made me understand what I needed because I went into the process thinking I needed one thing and I needed actually like a smaller amount of like a smaller amount of big things and what I actually needed was a larger amount of small things um, and and yeah being able to actually get in there and work on things while you were all working on things was like it allowed it to grow organically into something that really 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 makes sense for us awesome. yeah. <laughs> This is why we brought him because yeah. it is it is a bit of a weird um, process. I think it is a bit unusual, but so it's not just us standing up here being like it can work. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, have. It yeah, totally. To <laughs> I've worked. I've worked. This is the second redesign that I've done with this company, um, and you know, it, and in the last one, it was very much like the designer like took a pre-existing theme and tweaked it and came to me with this beautiful looking website. And I was like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful looking website. Also, because we had this horrible, horrible, horrible content management system before that. <laughs> it was it was garbage. Um, <laughs> oh. um, and I thought like, oh my God, this is the coolest website ever. And then within like four months, uh, I don't know what to do with it. And the guy's website doesn't like his, he's, gone to work for some organization and I can't get a hold of him and I don't know and I'm like calling and I'm like trying to figure out how to like edit themes and crashing my website and it was it was horrible actually but like yeah working with this makes so much sense particularly like particularly for like a client like me that's a small organization um, that's doing a lot of that management on site and in house doing a process like this makes it a hundred times easier to actually take over the website in the end sure. awesome Nice. Yeah. Thank you. Question? <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> okay, I saw that one first. Um, you said that it was about a four plus month yeah. iteration of the whole thing. Yeah. Did you split that up into discrete sprints or iterations? Sure. Where you had a, a cycle. How long were the sprints? Okay, so we didn't we didn't break into sprints because we're not an agency. Um, although I do know a lot of large agencies that are starting to break into small teams like this and follow this smaller model. Um, Lynn and I are both independent contractors, um, so, but we just happen to like working together a lot. Um, so I would say like designy thinking, research talky. Uh, that's a sprint. That's a sprint. <laughs> Three weeks. Uh, 
been designy talky devy talky uh like a week i would say so we had the dates that we had was uh start date we had our test site uh presentation date yeah uh then we had our cutoff and launch and those were the only defined those dates like that we started benchmarks. with marks um mm-hmm. but up to, to the test site i think we had a vague i should have looked this up uh we had a vague period where i wasn't involved yet when yeah. you were doing design stuff yeah i was doing design research um I don't remember how long that was. It was a couple it, it weeks. Was probably a couple weeks. weeks. Yeah, two, yeah. three weeks. Uh, and I went on holiday in the middle of that. And actually, yeah. being on holiday is a great time to really think about like big problems, um, to be outside of your comfort zone and really be having a mojito and thinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> it works. Uh, then, like purely just building out the test site, you needed a couple weeks to do that. Yeah. Um, then we presented, so we probably, we were probably about six weeks into the entire process when we presented yeah. that first big reveal test site. And then we iterated for And then there was nothing six, defined six really. eight weeks. Yeah. Um, but it was continuous from then on. Yeah. Yeah, and we did make sure that we had regular check-ins. Um, we didn't necessarily set a pace of like every Tuesday morning we all jump on a call, yeah. just because that's what seemed to work for this team. We were we were good communicators right off the bat. But um, I have tried this with other clients where you need to have a clear like we're going to send you an email every Friday that says what we did this week. We're going to have a check-in call every Tuesday morning, you know, just to make sure that you stay on that that path. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then uh, and then you had a week of QA, yep. total lockdown, hands off debugging. Um, you were also doing a lot of QA and debugging on the fly. Yeah, but I didn't yeah. pull out all the devices and like right. do all the all that testing. stuff until right at the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we'd already planned for um, uh, no, we we didn't do a hosting migration, did we? No, we stayed on their server. Yeah. So yeah, that was all fine. Yeah. Uh, here. This question: how, how were you able to convince uh, the client? Biggest hat trick I ever pulled. Good question. Um, <laughs> I made sure to let you know off the bat that he was a referral client. Referral clients, which is a lot of how this industry works, means that they probably heard good things about you. So right out of the bat, before they've even met you, they probably already like you a little bit. So exploit that. Um, <laughs> also, you know, uh, Clients, like Mark said, uh, clients don't necessarily know what iterative means, et cetera, et cetera, <laughs> right? Like, you um, need a bit of this <clears throat> attitude. Uh, and you, you always talk about it. like what, what does it mean to them at the end of the day? Um, we said it's going to be cheaper, it's going to be faster, and you're going to enjoy it more. And then it just kind of became a like, trust me, I know what I'm doing, sort of thing. And that's a bit of like the charm and the you know that we we try to bring in but part of it is a confidence thing i think just saying i've done this is how i always work i've done this on a bunch of projects it's been Um, successful we've done it but if you haven't done it before then you can't well you could still say that yeah Uh, yeah. (laughs) um yeah and i think just being uh actually i think if you haven't done it before too just being honest and saying like this is how this works i think this would work really well with this project um i have tried to sell this uh to clients and it hasn't worked like there have been people who have like, no, we'd prefer to go with an agency that has a more waterfall method. So yeah, it doesn't always work. And actually, like it was, it's actually very similar to the way we work internally. Oh, at interesting. Organi- like, I didn't know that. Like really? because yeah. like yeah, like oh, oh yeah, we talked about that early with Brendan. Yeah. Even that do, the doing iterative like this on a website is not unlike um, having all the different designers and directors and and mm-hmm. uh, playwright and actors yeah. come in and how they build. Um, a play in the mm-hmm. rehearsal hall. Yeah, or even it, like even in our office, in a yeah. small office, like chances are like, like I've worked in a bunch of small offices and people are always like walking in and out and showing things in process. So it's actually like, I didn't realize it at the time, but it's because I was scared. But then at the end, I'm like, <laughs> oh, this is actually like, this is how we work. Like, and I think it's I, like, it's the way I've worked at a lot of different organizations. So I think it just, you just don't call it an iterative process right. most of the time. Yeah, right. such a clunky term. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh. We have a very strange pricing philosophy. Yeah, also we don't price in the same way. Yeah, uh, which makes so fun. when we work together we have to compromise. Um, <laughs> I believe in value based pricing, Lynn bases based on t- prices based on time. I'm a little more hourly. Um, that makes it fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also, part of, so, okay, like so, like. so 
so a lot budget. of a lot of projects with um, charities or not for profits, uh, they have a budget already. You mm -hmm. don't get to really be like they've applied for the grant and they already got it, and that's yeah. what your budget is. Yeah. Um, so one way that I find um, iterative is actually easier is that you say, okay, we have this much money, so yeah. we're going to iterate until the money runs out. Yeah. yeah. Basically. Yeah. Um, that, that's kind of what we did for this one. Like, like yeah. we were told up front what their budget was, which is not necessarily a normal thing, but a lot of charities kind of do it that way. They'll say like, yeah. we have allocated X number of dollars for this. Can yeah. you do it for that amount of dollars? And then we were able to say, yeah, actually we yeah. can. And this is how we're going to do yeah. it that way. And it, and it also made for like, we never had to use this, like the ACE card, but we could have at any one point been like, that's out of your budget. Sorry, we can't we can't do that request. Yeah. And we set up priorities too at the beginning. I was yeah. like, yeah. okay, this is what I want. Like if like if we like we have to get through this much on the budget. And then if we still have money left over, we'll do this. And then if we still have money left over that, then we'll do this third yeah. thing. But so it does mean that like you can be a little more flexible because that's just what the project is gonna be like. But yeah, it is first thing is always hard. Yeah. yeah. Another presentation. Great question. Um, so how we strategized about um, all the stuff that happened on the back end. Um, the back end was actually done before the front end. So there were a lot of custom fields that were built uh, into the back end that weren't being output yet even. But it was just so that Mark could get in and start inputting the content, and then we would figure out how they were um, styled. Um, he always had access. Yeah. Um, adding custom fields, I find, isn't too like either they're working on the page and it's not there, and then they'll refresh and then they have the new custom field. Like it doesn't conflict with what they're doing necessarily. Yeah. Um, we also had a really clear strategy up front that came out of the client research uh, of which custom fields we would need yeah. right out of the gate. But so we did add a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. Afterwards. Um, I think we have to, we're out of time. Yeah, I think technically we have to shut down, but we'll, but hang, like, out. we'll hang out in the hallway or whatever you want to keep asking us questions. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>